Transformers are the key driving force behind today's AI boom. However, the attention mechanism is slow and memory hungry. Many have tried using approximations to speed it up, making the attention metrics sparse or roll rate. These techniques are very interesting, but none of them fries. These approximate attention methods often sacrifice accuracy while not achieving actual wall clock speed up. That change with flash attention. It's a clever algorithm that is fast, memory efficient, and exact. In this video, I will first explain why self-attention is slow and talk about how one could speed up the computation using IO-aware algorithms like tiling. I will use matrix multiplication as an example. But it's not immediately clear how we can use an IO-aware algorithm to speed up attention. To do this, we need to first understand a clever trick called online softmax. I will then show how extending online softmax leads to flash attention. Let's start by looking at self-attention. The self-attention module first computes the query and key vectors, and then computes the vector dot product with every pair to capture the intra correlation between tokens. This creates an A by A attention matrix. This matrix isn't too large here, but it becomes memory heavy with sequence of tens of thousands of tokens. We can express the computation more concisely with matrix multiplication by stacking all the query vectors along the rows and all the key vectors along the columns. Next, we apply the softmax function for each row to get the attention weights and compute the output as the weighted average of the value vectors. So the whole process boils down to these three simple equations. For simplicity, I'm leaving out some details like dot product scaling, dropout, causal masking, and multi-hat attention. To understand why it is slow, let's look at how this computation happened on a GPU. The query, key, and value metrics are stored in a high bandwidth memory, HBM, outside the GPU cores. We load the query and key metrics from HBM, computer dot product, and save the result S back to HBM. Next, we load the matrix S from HBM, compute the row-wise softmax, and write the n by n attention matrix A back to HBM. Finally, we load the attention matrix A and the value matrix V from HBM, compute the weighted average, and write the output O to HBM. As we can see, data frequently travel back and forth between the HBM and the GPU cores. This back and forth global memory access adds significant latencies. So how can we speed this up? Let's examine the memory hierarchy, focusing on the bandwidth and the memory size. All computers have DRAM. It's large, but slow in bandwidth. On a GPU, there's HBM with smaller size, about 40 gigabytes, but much faster bandwidth than DRAM. On chip SRAM, it's an order of magnitude faster than HBM, but much smaller. The core idea is to leverage on chip SRAM to prevent the cost of loading and writing large n by n attention metrics on slow HBM. But the SRAM is much smaller. Clearly, we cannot feed the full attention metrics in SRAM. This is where the tiling technique comes in. Let's use matrix multiplication as an example. Here, we want to multiply two 4x4 matrices, A and B, to produce output matrix C. The value of C11 is the dot product between the first row vector of matrix A and the first column vector of matrix B. Similarly, the value of C12 is the dot product between the first row vector of matrix A and the second column vector of matrix B. Following this rule, we compute the value of C21 and C22. Now let's check how many global memory assets this requires. To compute each value, we need to load one row vector from matrix A and one column vector from matrix B, so A accesses. In total, this results in 32 memory accesses. Can we do better? We see that C11 can be computed with two dot products. The same applies to other values. Now let's group them along the column and row dimensions. We now see that the 2x2 two two block in the output matrix C can be computed by adding two 2x2 two two matrix multiplications. Each of these multiplications require A access. With tiling, we just need 16 memory access for computing the same four values. Using n by n blocks, 
we can cut grower memory access by a factor of n. To complete the matrix multiplication, we partition the matrix A, B, and C into 2x2 two two blocks. Now these 2x2 two two blocks can be moved to on-chip SRAM for faster processing. We then combine these partial tile-based matrix multiplications to get the final results. That's great progress! Now how can we apply the tiling technique to speed up attention? Hmm. We already know how to apply tiling to perform matrix multiplication. But we still have this softmax operation in between. Let's focus on this and see how we can break down the computation using tiling. For simplicity, we only consider one row of the attention matrix at a time. This gives us a sequence of n number x1 to xn. To compute softmax, we first apply an exponential to make all the numbers positive, then normalize them to sum up to 1. One issue with this approach is that it's not numerically stable. With half precision, overflow occurs in the exponential function for input values over 11. Luckily, we have a simple fix. Before the exponential step, we first subtract m, the maximum value of the sequence, from each input. This prevents the overflowing issue because all the input values to the exponential function are now less than or equal to zero. This is known as safe softmax. So how do we implement safe softmax? Essentially, it requires three passes of the sequence S. The first pass finds the maximum value in the sequence. We call it mm here. In the second pass, we compute the sum of the exponential values. Finally, we normalize the exponential value to obtain the attention weights summing up to 1. This is very IO inefficient because the algorithm requires iterating the sequence three times. Let's explore how to reduce global memory access by refusing computations. We cannot fuse the second pass with the first one due to the dependency of mn, which is the maximum value of the sequence found in the first pass. We can remove this dependency by replacing the value mn with mi, where mi is the maximal value of the partial sequence from x1 to xi. At the end, note that the dn will equal dn plum. But how do we compute the sequence di plum iteratively? We first separate the i's item from the summation. We then multiply a dummy value of 1 here. Since multiplication is associative, we can swap these two terms. Now we recognize that the summation in the parentheses is just di minus 1 plum. This gives us the recurrence relation between di plum and di minus 1 plum. Using this recurrence, we can implement the softmax function by just two passes over the sequence. We merge the two for loops into one because the recurrence only depends on mi, mmi minus 1, not mn. This is the idea of online softmax. Now let's see if we can apply the same idea for self-attention. In self-attention, the xi are the pre-softmax logics computed by the dot product between the query and key vectors. This can be handled in the first loop. We compute the output O using the weighted average of value vectors according to the attention weight ai. So this requires two passes. Can we fuse everything into one loop? Here we denote oi as the weighted average of the value vectors up to the i's token. We cannot fuse the computation in one single loop due to the dependency on mm and dm plant. Let's try the same trick as before by replacing mm and dm plant with mi and di plant. This gives us a new sequence oi plum. First, we move the i's term out of the summation and multiply some dummy values of 1. Now we can swap these terms and regroup the equations like this. We recognize the summation in the parentheses is simply oi minus 1 plum. This forms a recurrence relation between oi plum and oi minus 1 plum. By removing the dependency of mn and dm plum, we can now fuse all the computation into one single loop. This approach forms flash attention. 
fresh attention avoids materializing the large attention metrics by fusing all the computations together. We still get exact results after iterating through all the elements in the sequence. Let's visualize these steps. Here we have query, key, and value matrices. We first partition these matrices into tiles. We load the first query tile from HBM to onchip SRAM. Similarly, we load the first key and value tiles to SRAM. With all these values, we can perform the attention computation and save the partial result to HBM. Now we have the partial result labeled as O1 plump. Then we load the next tile, perform attention computation in SRAM, and update partial results as O2 plum. We repeat this for all tiles, updating the output each time. At the end of the loop, we have the complete attention results as O5 plum. Similarly, we repeat this process for the next query tile, loading the corresponding key and value blocks, computing the attention, and updating the results. Using tiling, we do not materialize the full attention matrix at any time, and this significantly reduces the global memory access. This achieves fast, memory efficient, and exact computation of the attention mechanism. And that's the core of fresh attention. There's already follow up work to improve the efficiency of fresh attention further, like fresh attention 2 and fresh attention 3. It's amazing how hardware aware algorithms can make attention so much faster and memory efficient. In summary, we cover why attention is slow, how an IO algorithm like tiling can speed things up, online softmax and its extension to flash attention. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.